Hutchinson. I'm Earl Ovare Hutchinson. Welcome to another edition of our concert series. Tonight, the mighty Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. This is a performance, a live performance, as you can see in here, of the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, the widely acclaimed Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. On the Hutchinson Report, our Beethoven and Me Facebook live stream group, we bring these concerts in conjunction with different local symphonic groups around Southern California. And perhaps even a little bit later, we'll extend to the nation. Tonight, the mighty Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D, and I will uh, introduce some of the performers toward the end of my discussion. I'm going to give um, so a little bit of discussion, well, a lot of discussion, really, during the, the performance of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto about the piece itself, about Tchaikovsky, a very, very in many ways complex and complicated individual in a troubled life, like so many classical music composers. But the Violin Concerto in D, a little bit of background first. By the way, Tchaikovsky only wrote one violin concerto, and boy, was it a doozy. He didn't have to do any more than that. The Violin Concerto was uh, composed in 1878. There are three movements. What you're listening to now is movement number one, the Allegro Moderato. The second movement, only three movements, uh, and they run together. Tchaikovsky was very good about that, no breaks. The second movement will be the Canzonetta, which is the Andante, or a slow movement. So usually in classical music, in a symphonic work or a concerto, the form is fast, slow, fast, slow. Sometimes, in the majority of the cases, actually four movements. But Tchaikovsky, he did it in three. And then you have the up-tempo, presto, or allegro, what they call the vivacissimo, the finale. And Tchaikovsky picks it up there. Yeah, no, he's on, uh, <laughs> he's on speed with this one. And by the way, as people join in, I'll certainly acknowledge you and uh, give away to you. Barbara Bramwell Hutchinson, welcome uh, to our, our live performance tonight, the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, the mighty, stirring Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. Joe, welcome. And uh, Brian, welcome. Let me give Brian a wave. And the concert, actually the piece is about uh, 30 to 35 minutes. And uh, we're going to get as much as we can of this. So let me take you back, and I'll continue my commentary while you're watching and listening. So a little bit of uh, background on the violin can share the structure. The first movement is in sonata form, which is usually, as you can see, the accompaniment of piano. By the way, this is a modified orchestra because of COVID. And as you can see, only a few members of the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, not the full orchestra. But uh, nonetheless, you see and you hear the, the force, the exuberance, the power, and the energy. That was Tchaikovsky. First movement is in sonata form. And uh, it's what's called the introduction, and exposition, development, and the recapitulation. You hear all the themes that you'll hear in the entire work if you listen very closely and with a discerning ear throughout what's called the introduction of the first movement, Sonata. The second movement is relatively Dante by Vachisimo. Remember, fast, slow. And then Tchaikovsky in this particular piece, he only wrote the one violin concerto. The final movement, Tchaikovsky was a Russian nationalist. And um, you'll hear in the final movement, you'll hear a lot of the themes of Russian folk music, the dances, uh, the songs, the, fill, the village of uh, voices that come through all the time in a lot of Tchaikovsky and all the Russian. Uh. There will be, um, be a few glitches. We're inside and um, we had a rainy night. We had some electrical problems, of course, in the ambiance, so there may be a coming in and a coming out, but we'll try to minimize that. But stay with us. Again, you're listening to the first movement, if you just joined us, the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. 
The first movement in sonata form. Again, I apologize. Um, we're just having some technical glitches here, but just stay with us and stay with Tchaikovsky. You can't go wrong with him. Again, you're listening to the first movement, three movement work, the sonata. You've got a very small ensemble, not the full Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. Primarily, uh, the rhythm and the bass section is a piano. Then you have uh, a score for a violin, or in this case, five violins, bass, no drums, and no brass. Violin, piano, bass, keyboards, and strings, and of course, the soldiers. And this is a Tchaikovsky characteristic, building, 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 driving, 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 energy, energy, energy. Let me, uh, let me give you a little insider view of Tchaikovsky's work. Notice this. This is a notation, the actual score. But the violin can share... Now, listen carefully. There will be a slight transition coming out the low key register on the violin, coming out of that back into what's called the recapitulation. In other words, the violinist and the piano, they will rework the major theme. They'll bring it back again. They call it the recapitulation. That's foundational in classical music. You set a theme, you recapitulate, and also it's called the coda. Notice how it goes up and she goes up and down the soloist on the scales in the register. That was Tchaikovsky, the full range of the register of the instrument. Now there will be a gentle interlude after the recapitulation. If you notice the piano and the entire the string section, but especially the piano, they repeat the coda, the theme. Again, it's called the recapitulation. Listen very closely with a discerning ear. You'll hear a theme over and over again. Different keys, different registers, different scale. Then there'll be a transition. This is the Andante, by the way. Remember, there are no breaks. We went from uh, the Sonata, the second movement, which is the Andante, which is what they say is slow. 
and then Tchaikovsky picks it up. He's on speed dial for the last, what's called the Allegro, or in this case, the finale, Vivacissimo. Peter Yelich Tchaikovsky had a, to say the least, a very troubled existence. He was, um, let's just say, in the vernacular of that day, sexually challenged. Um, he had a, a very, very pitiful personal life, forced into marriage, which he did not want to do, because Tchaikovsky was of same-sex persuasion, and he had male lovers, and they had to hide it in that era. It was, it was against the law. Can you imagine 19th century Russia? Tradition bound, rock rail, uh, semi feudal, czar ridden, dynasty ridden Russia. Homosexuality then certainly was verboten, to say the least. Tchaikovsky had to hide that he was a tormented, tortured soul because of that. Uh, and that was it. But in a sense, it came through the, t uh, the tension. The drama, the pathos, and the energy, the driving force, which is characteristic of Tchaikovsky, came through in all of his music. His big six symphonies, the Pathetique, number six, number five, um, li the Little Russian Symphony, number two, Winter Dreams, number one, the Polish Symphony, number, uh, number three. All of them had names, by the way. And they all had Russian themes. Uh, folk themes, Tchaikovsky and the Russian, uh, Russian composers of the 19th century and the 20th century, for that matter, were huge on that. Tchaikovsky um, began composing the violin concerto, indeed, that you're listening to, at a Swiss resort on the shores of Lake Geneva. He had gone there to recover from depression brought on by his disastrous marriage. Remember I mentioned a minute ago? Forcing the marriage to keep up appearances to a woman. And that was not Tchaikovsky. And uh, it went nowhere. It was a disaster. But Tchaikovsky retreated, went to Switzerland, and he poured his energy into, in this case, I guess the world's benefit, the violin concerto. Now, Tchaikovsky wrote to his brother Anatoly on the day he completed the new slow movement, which you're listening to now. Quote, this is Peter Ellis Tchaikovsky. It goes without saying that I would have been able to do nothing without him. He plays it marvelously. He's talking about an individual, his violinist friend, that he wrote this for. And of course, we now know that Tchaikovsky had a love affair with him. But um, he rejected it. He did not play it. He said it was not playable. That was the case, too, by the way, with the Tchaikovsky piano concerto. They also said Arthur Rubinstein and that famous thing said, rewrite it. It's trash. It's not playable. Tchaikovsky said, I will not change a note. And of course, the rest is history. We come back to the violin concerto. By the way, now we're transitioning now into that final movement. The Vivacacicissimo Allegretto. Fast, fast, up tempo, up tempo, up tempo. And by the way, the first performance, the individual that rejected it was Leopold Auer. Who remembers him? His loss, the world's game. But Tchaikovsky was hurt. He was hurt at uh, his delay, or actually his rejection. But Tchaikovsky said, hey, the show must go on. I'm not going to change it. Actually, he did tweak a little bit here and there, as all the great composers did. They were never always totally satisfied. Nothing just came out whole cloth. And, um, the first performance was on December 4th, 1881 in Vienna, under the baton of the great conductor of that era, Hans Richter. And uh, Tchaikovsky changed the dedication to, in this case, the soloist, the initial performer, Adolf Brodsky. Again, critics savaged it. They savaged the violin concerto. This is what one said, it stinks to high heaven, or better still, it stinks to the air. Another one labeled the last movement odorless, odorlessly Russian. And um, 
One of the major critics of the day, Edwin Hansley, said, quote, the violin was not played but beaten black and blue. These are the critics talking about the violin concerto you're listening to. Listen to the fury. Listen to the energy. You can feel it, the passion, the drive. It's not the final movement. Now, this is the Andante. Slow, slow, melodic, almost lazy, languorous. The orchestra introduces, in concertos, by the way, you have one solo instrument, and let me bring it back. You have one solo instrument, a little bit about the history of the concerto. In the high Baroque period, you had, of course, Bach, Telemann, Vivaldi. These were small ensembles long before, of course, the great symphonic orchestras. That came later on, the development and the evolution of that with Franz Joseph Haydn, Papa Haydn. Now we're looking at the mid-1700s, the evolution into what we know today as a symphonic work. The concerto came out of that came out of the high Baroque where you had solo instruments, three, four, and oftentimes they would go, they would write. Bach was very good at this. He was a great organist, great pianist, and he would write into the pieces solo parts for himself so he could shine. I mean, after all, he wanted to look good and he wanted to sound good. He was putting his talents on display because oftentimes he was auditioning. And Bach, Vivaldi, Telemann, in that era, they were employed by the court, the emperors and the kings, and sometimes the church. They worked for them. They were at their beck and call. But back to uh, the particulars of a concerto. So it evolved out of that. As the symphony evolved, four movements, sometimes three, solo parts came out, and composers began writing in the tradition of Bach, Vivaldi, Telemann, and, um, and uh, Scarlatti. They pencil in to showcase the works of individual, oftentimes themselves, uh, but artists that they work with, very closely with, or admire. And so oftentimes, as um, Tchaikovsky did with the violin concerto, he wrote this specifically for a great violinist, a friend of his, and a lover of his, by the way, in that era, Leopold Auer. He rejected it, as I said before, but nonetheless, that was the whole point of it. And so, now it's a showpiece, and what happens is you have one instrument, could be the violin, could be the piano, could be the cello, could be the saxophone, yes, you have the saxophone, it could even be the tuba, um, it could be a bass, it could be almost any instrument, and it's accompanied by, certainly in the symphonic era, a full orchestra. So use this in interplay. And as you can hear, and we'll go back to it again, let's listen to it a little bit and watch. The gentility of, this is the second movement, the Andante. Or, if you want the, the full name of that movement, the canzon, Canzonetta, the Andante, and for my musician friends out there, the key, G minor. Very melodic, very slow, very cerebral. It tells a cerebral telling message. The second movement of the three movement violin concerto in D, Peter Ilyich, Ilyich Tchaikovsky. That's Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Or Tchaik. A lot of people just say Tchaik. Again, if you're just joining us, this is uh, our special 
and we do this periodically. The we have, by the way, a Facebook group. Um, the Beethoven and Me Facebook Classical Music Group. Go to my Facebook page and uh, dial it up. A lot of good stuff on there about the classical music world. And uh, in addition to that, join the group if you're on Facebook. And uh, we have done, let's see, in our series, we've done about four of these since um, uh, last November. And we'll continue to do them because, as you know, the concert halls during the season are closed. Uh, no concert music, live that is. So all of it's being streamed with COVID facial masks and social distancing with smaller ensembles. This is the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. And by the way, this was a concert that was broadcast, a live stream performance, about three weeks ago. So we're rebroadcasting now because we wanted to give you the full import of it and the commentary on it. And um, as you can see, donations to the Pasadena Civic Orchestra. Become a member. Join. It's a very, certainly it's a worthwhile cause. Phenomenal group. Phenomenal orchestra. Great music. Great musicians. Great institute. And certainly top flight performances, as you can see and hear tonight, with the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. A three movement work again, if you're just joining us. You have, and I'll give you the movements again. I'm sure you're taking copious notes on this. Uh, you have the Allegro Moderato in D major, different keys, by the way, uh, for our musician friends out there. The Canzonet. The Andante, again, in another key, G minor. And then finally, the finale, the Allegro, Vivacissimo, in D major. Piano, violins, and of course, our concert performance, performer, soloist. We're going to go about five more minutes with the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. And another little factoid about this. Um, Tchaikovsky, uh, like so much of classical music, it found and finds, continually finds its way into the pop world. You had rock and rollers, you had reggae artists, you had jazz musicians, you had R&B, and you had pop musicians. And certainly in the film industry, borrowed borrowed, borrowed for many of the classical music works. Well, guess what? In the violin concerto in B, same rules apply. Uh, parts of this have been in a number of films and uh, been a number of films. In fact, has anybody seen The Equalizer with Denzel Washington? Bits of the violin concerto, believe it or not, were in The Equalizer. They've been in French films, they've been in cartoons, they've been in dramas. You name it, even in, do you remember the space movement, the right stuff? Everything from the equalizer, the right stuff, the cartoons, they borrowed continually from the classical music world. Hi, Jenna, let me give you a wave. You're just joining us. All right, now we pick it up, transition. We're transitioning from the andante into the last movement. This is where Tchaikovsky swings it out. Now listen, how he picks it up. Se allegro, vai vaticissimo. Notice how Tchaikovsky runs up and down on the register, the keys, and the melody. High, low, bottom, middle, all the ranges on the violin, up, down, through the whole scales, and all the time the energy. Drive, drive. And then a small transition, he drops it down. 
He's on the upper register here with the violin. Again, uh, Tchaikovsky only wrote one violin concerto, but boy, <laughs> was it one for the ages. The critics didn't like it, talked about it bad, saying it was no good. One even said it stunk to the ears. Tchaikovsky didn't bat an eye. He said it is what it is. We'll tweak it a little bit, but it stands. Uh, those particular critics, uh, no one knows them. Long gone, long forgotten. But here's what we have for posterity. The world is much better and richer. Classical music has enriched our life, our living, our culture, our being for decades and decades. Tchaikovsky was a Russian nationalist. In the last movement, this is the third movement, the Allegro Vivacissimo, you hear many of the themes of Russian folk uh, lore literature, music, the village has come through. Um, in just about all of his works, as a matter of fact, in one of his works, one of my favorites, uh, his symphony number two, The Little Russian, uh, it was filled, I mean, filled with, by the way, uh, the Little Russia back then was a Ukraine. Now it's an independent nation, of course, but the Ukraine was Little Russia, part of the Russian Empire at that time. So Tchaikovsky filled the Little Russian Symphony with tons of Ukrainian folk music. And if you listen closely, in fact, they picked that apart, taken out some, um, in spotlight of that, many of the Russian folk tunes that appear in the Little Russian Symphony. Well, the same with the violin concerto that you're listening to now. Okay, now, here we go. We're on speed dial, that's Tchaikovsky. Up, down, slow, fast. High range, low range, middle range, upper register, lower register, middle register. High energy, all the way. Um, again, because of COVID, Concert season has been closed down. By that, I mean live performances in the concert halls for the past year. So what the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra did and other symphonic orchestras, but the, especially the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, they're bringing performances to you. They're not going to be uh, undaunted by COVID. So in this case, a smaller orchestra, in this case, solo, piano, very few pieces, really only two pieces. And... Um, you almost feel like you have the entire symphony there backing her of the soloist, which is usually the case. So I think you have gotten the feel. Marcia, welcome. A wave to you. I think you have gotten the feeling, the mood, the liveliness, the energy, and a good uplifting moment. God knows we need that in this world that we live in. We've been listening tonight to the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in D. We're going to do this on a regular or periodic basis, I should say, um, partnering with the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra and also another one of my favorites, Musica Angelica. I'm a great fan a great patron, and a great aficionado of the high Baroque, Bach, Vivaldi, Scarlatti, uh, <laughs> Telemann. I just love it to death. So we're going to close out tonight. I want to thank everybody. Barbara Brownwell Hutchinson, thank you. Joel, uh, Brian, Bridget, love this. Jenna, thank you. Marcia. By the way, I'm going to post this on my um, Hutchinson Report Facebook page just with my synopsis, my discussion, by giving you an overview and hopefully enlightening you a little bit about the symphonic work, concertos, and just really, really just piquing your interest, if it's not already there, in the great world of classical music. Tonight, I want to say a special thanks and a shout out 
to the folk over at uh, the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. They made this available to me. Um, they have, uh, they're open for donations and subscriptions. You can't go, uh, unfortunately, right now. Probably in the fall that will change, hopefully. With the concert season, we'll be back in full swing again. And you can enjoy this music live, in person, in the concert hall. But for now, I'm going to be bringing you periodically my Facebook group, through my Facebook group, uh, Beethoven and Me, the classical music guide and classical music lovers group. Um, in the next couple of weeks, maybe Puccini. The Pasadena Symphony Orchestra will be doing Puccini and uh, some of the other greats of the greats. So stay tuned for that. Um, I want to thank everybody tonight for joining us. I'll take you back for just a few seconds and we'll close it out. And by the way, the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, the, the violinist, great young talent, her name will be on the Facebook page so you'll know who she is, along with the accompanist on piano. Once again, I want to thank you tonight for joining me in my Facebook group, Beethoven and Me. We brought this to you, courtesy of the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, the mighty Tchaikovsky, violin concerto and D. Tchaikovsky's getting ready to take it up. Notice room, taking it out, taking it out, taking it out. He repeats the theme again. Dun, 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 dun. Same thing, over, over. The recapitulation, which is always characteristic and standard in the classical music, a symphonic, and the concerto genre. Once again, thank everyone. I thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight on our Facebook live stream with the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. Beethoven and me.